bad, immoral, and wrong. This is the Modern Eater Show. Piping hot and delicious. The Modern Eater. Food, 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 food. Oh, and now your hosts, Greg Hollenbeck, Jay Parker, and Brian Freeman. Hi, and welcome to the What's show, up? the Modern Eater Show, live from Studio Kitchen, Colorado, the second show of the year. Pat House. It's a good one tonight. Holy cow, the energy's up, up, up. I know. Brian Freeman Move not here tonight. tonight. Jay Parker, are we are we going on there, Don? Back at the studio? I hope we are. Um, <laughs> don't do that. Don't do I that. I know Don's me. talking to me in my headset. Okay, oh. all's well in the world. Greg Hollenbach, Jay Parker, Brian Freeman off tonight, Little Rich Schneider. Uh, Dave Avery doing Jay's job. Correct. Jay doing Brian's job. Little Rich doing I, Little Rich's job. I don't know what I'm doing, but we'll, we'll find out. You're being Little Rich, which this, is fantastic. This is a good show tonight. It's all brew pubs tonight. That's right. Brew beer, uh, beer ever, and food. What do you know about a, a brew pub, Jay? Well, I know that the traditional brewery was just brewery. And the food truck model, right? I mean, at least that's the more yeah. common one. Mm-hmm. And then a lot of breweries started going, you know, let's get the food license and make it a brew pub so that we can do our own food and not have to rely on a food truck showing up when they want and running out of food and so on and so forth. That's what I know. Well, yeah, food, food and beer. Pretty accurate, yeah. <laughs> food and yeah. Beer. They have a kitchen, make their own food. But also, and we'll talk to uh, so on tonight's show, we've got the Post Brewing Company. If you lived in Denver for any amount of time, they've got four locations looking to expand. What are the locations? It's Lafayette, like Longmont, Rosedale. Do you know where Rosedale is? No, I do not. It's just, uh, it, it'd be like Cherry Creek. It's in Denver, Rosedale. It's like Alameda and Broadway area. I oh, had no okay. idea either. I, 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 Rosedale. Well, we'll have to go there. Boulder. Nice. And then they're looking to get in DIA. And then guess where else? Stanley Hotel. Whoa. The carriage house. I can't wait to hear about it. That would make me want to go to the Stanley. Really? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I've stayed at the Stanley. They put the shining on on the, the channel when you so when you turn the TV on that's the first thing that's on. <laughs> I didn't realize that. I thought it was a coincidence. <laughs> and one of their signature cocktails is the red, red rum. rum. <laughs> yeah. 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 I still like the dumb and dumber part better than the Shining, but that's me. You're not a scary. You're, you're a comedy guy. You, well, yeah, that's why. Not a scary movie that's why. guy. I don't know. That's pretty. Look at these chicken good sandwiches movie. that this chef is putting I together. Know. So no. coming on the show, we're going to have chef, chef Brett Smith, and they call him Schmitty. So Schmitty is going to come on the show, and Brad Landman, the uh, head brewer at the Post Brewing, and uh, then. Guess what? We're not done with well, brew pub. Wait, wait. There's, there's a, more. Yeah, there's a new. There's a new <laughs> brew pub in town. Cool neighborhood, kind of by the Colorado Restaurant Association and yeah. the, uh, the the new. It's where Governor's Park. Tacos, area. tequila, and whiskey. Carboy's got the yeah. room over there. Bonanno's got a couple of concepts there. It's called Counter Culture. Nice Bre- brewery and grill. Uh, you know, I drove by it last night. It was packed. Oh, you packed? Did? How come you didn't go in? Um, I was tired. <laughs> I'm old. I'm old. I, I just want to go home. What's the address on that? Um, it's again, it's just right. And Sh- not Sherman. I know. I bet you could take a guess. Couldn't you, Rich? It's probably about that. 7th and Sherman. 205 East 7th Avenue. So I think you're right. Yeah. Right there about 7th and Sherman. Yeah. Counterculture, they'll be on the show in the next hour. And I think there's kind of a chicken theme for some reason. Chicken sandwiches and beer go well together. Did you know that? Mm-hmm. Okay. I don't do the beer part, but I do the chicken sandwich part. But chicken sandwich, not only do they go together well, but chicken sandwiches are really popular right now. Yeah. Absolutely. And we've been called foul many times. So this is just, there's not, it's not a stretch for us to do a show about chicken sandwiches. We all feel good here. You can uh, check us out live on, um, on the Internet. Jeez, right? We're streaming. Best place to go to themoderneater.com. Yes. Click on the watch live. There it is. We're streaming live. If you're on Facebook, thank you for joining us. We're streaming live on Facebook as well. Why don't we break, guys? Come back, and we'll uh, get this party started. Sounds like a plan. Little Rich okay. is so Give me about 30 seconds. Let me set up my corner. Yeah. Why, is, why does Rich need 30 seconds? To set up the Little Rich corner. Yeah, to get in the Little Rich corner. I wonder who he's hunting for. 
He likes to get the most interesting uh, people in the room first. Here's here's the reason why you should watch us online is uh, during the commercial breaks, not only do you hear from our fantastic sponsors, but you also hear a little segment only viewed online from Little Rich in the Little Rich Corner. He pulls somebody out of the crowd, interviews him for a minute, and it's a hit. He's got a cult following. 60 seconds of gold. 60 seconds of gold. That's right. We also have a new segment that we want to deploy. We do. Do you remember the name of it? I Well, I do. If you want to stick with that name, should I say it or you yeah. just want to what wait? What is it? Not for nothing. Not for nothing. Not for nothing. We like to learn about the folks that are making agriculture, food, and beverage here in Colorado. Let's take a break. We'll come back. We'll start. We'll fire off with the Post Brewing Company. We've got the Chef Schmitty. He's here with us. Mm-hmm. And then the head brewer, Brad Landman. They're coming up next right here on the Modern Eater Show on iHeartRadio. Whoo, boy, I got trying to get over here. Hey, I'm here with my new friend, James James Bland, but you ain't bland, baby. I saw what you're making over there. Man, welcome from Counterculture, correct? Thank you so much. I, I look forward to cooking for you all. This is going to be fun. So a little teaser, what are you making for us? Our best seller, our best fried chicken sandwich in the world. Uh, it's going to be incredible. I can't wait. Crunchy, hot, all that stuff. Yes, and a little bland. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> don't believe it. Don't believe it. So what's your favorite thing to cook? What's your, what's your top dish over there? Top dish over there is our fried chicken sandwich. We have several signature burgers as well, but our favorite thing is our fried chicken sandwich. I saw I saw a lot of people there yesterday. Now you know I make tortillas. So our, do you do a chicken taco over there? We will venture into oh, those. Yes, <clears throat> that's what For I'm talking sure. about, my man, my man. So where did you come here from? Uh, Washington D.C. Holy cow! What brought you out here? What's her name? Another opportunity. <laughs> Another opportunity. <laughs> oh, that's... Remain nameless. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Well, thanks for coming, James. This is going to be a blast. I'm going to let today. you get back over there to cook because I know we got a lot of stuff to feed. we got a lot of people in here. Yes, we do. This, this, this isn't a, a quiet place. <laughs> we'll be right back. We've got some words coming up from Ewing Levitt Agency. We'll be back. Thank you. Well, you can get up to $3,200 fast with a no-fee refund advance. It's a 0% APR loan from MetaBank that's available before your tax refund is, so you can get money when you need it. Go to JacksonHewitt.com to learn about availability, terms, and how you can get money on a prepaid car fast, like today fast. Go to Jackson Hewitt today. That's Jackson Hewitt. Modern Eater family, it's Little Rich. Everybody needs insurance, but do you have the insurance you need? When we opened Studio Kitchen Colorado, home of the Modern Eater, we had no idea what insurance we needed. We didn't even know where to begin. Times like that, I turned to the experts. Our insurance expert, Brian Brenning with the Ewing Levitt Agency. Brian makes the coverage discovery process easy and seamless. Here's what you can expect from Brian and the team at Ewing Levitt. The absolute safest coverage, fair, low rates, quick response time, and honest, straightforward service. I've been in business 40 years. I trust Brian Brenning and Ewing Levitt Agency. He's not just an insurance expert. He's my friend. Make him your friend and expert, too, by calling the Ewing Levitt Agency today, 970-679-7374. For the best and most reliable insurance coverage, that's 970-679-7374. It's the Ewing Levitt Agency. Hi, I'm Charlie Gottenkenny, brewmaster at Brews Beers, Denver's award-winning Belgian-style brewery. I am very pleased to tell you that our new tap room at Colfax and York in Congress Park is now open, and it is a unique experience. It's close to great restaurants, has a big sunny patio for warmer days, will feature live music, and it has a very cool contemporary Belgian-style bar and tap room. To celebrate our second location, we have 18 beers on tap, including several limited-edition sour and barrel-aged beers. For some holiday good cheer, try our figgy pudding and our unique champagne beer, Brut Le Grand. Check it all out on our website, brewsbeers.com. That's Bruce, spelled B-R-U-Z, at 67th and Pecos, and now open in Congress Park at Colfax in York. Join us this week at either location for some serious Belgian-style badass. Hey, Colorado. This is Brian Freeman, owner of Growers Organic and a host on the Modern Eater Talk Show. Growers Organic is a Colorado sourcing company who provides Colorado's greatest chefs with the best organic produce. I've been partnering with local and regional farms for the last 20 years, and our returning customers know they can count on us over and over again. Chefs who receive the highest rating on Good Food 100 choose Growers Organic for their organic produce needs because we're experts at bridging 
closing the gap between the farm and the table. Join us in the organic revolution and go organic with Growers Organic. Look us up online at growersorganic.com. Wear black and eat spices. Hey, modern eater. Liquor spirits. It's a distillery. It's a place to hang. It's about quality. It's about taste. It's about passion. Infused with American spirit. Rocker whiskey, rocker rum, rocker vodka. Get ready for an original look, feel, and experience. Old Town Littleton. And if you get hungry while you're sipping on some drinks, they've got the best food truck line in town. Open Thursdays, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. Rockerspirits.com. Rockerspirits.com. Hey, this is Brother Luck from Colorado Springs. All right, you ready? <laughs> Owner of Four My Brother Luck and Lucky Dumpling. I mean, he's, he's a very, very impressive man. <laughs> and you're rocking with the Modern Eater Show on iHeartRadio. Thanks, up. You betcha. Here we are back to Studio Kitchen, Colorado. We need the chicken sandwiches really, really bad. Uh, none better than beer. And, and beer. The Post Brewing here with us right now. Guys, we got the chef, got the brewer. This is like a party. That's it. Hey, yeah. well, Chicken you, and beer, we got both of them. Uh, Schmitty, welcome back. We were talking about you in, in the past segment. So, Chef Brett Smith here with us, also known as Schmitty. I hope you don't mind me calling you that. Please I guess do. your friends call you that. And Brad Landman, uh, welcome to the show. Hey, great to be here. Good to ca- I mean, where do we even begin, you guys? First of all, four very successful locations and building, right? Yep. No Talk- one coming up in Estes Park. What's your favorite location? Can you do that? I don't know. It's kind of like your kids, right? You can't really pick know. between well, the four you can, of them. But, can't you? Well, you know. <laughs> you can. Christopher Riley, you, love you both the same. <laughs> where do you hang out the most? Where do you find yourself? And that might be because of geography. So that, that so way. I'm pretty fortunate. I live in Erie, so I'm about half within a half hour, 40 minutes of all of them. So I try and bounce around to pretty, pretty equally. But uh, I don't know. Lafayette's the first one. It's the flagship. It's the biggest yeah. brewery. So, um, you know, that's kind of got the most going on. So. You know, that may be just barely partial to that one. Firstborn. Yeah. How about you? I spend most of my time in Lafayette. That's where our bre- main brewery is, uh-huh. so I'm, I'm there most of the time. Live a block and a half away from the Denver location, so yeah, that's really? where I do more of my eating and, and, and that's, drinking. That's, drinking a little of yeah. that one. <laughs> That's a block and a half from your house? It that, is, That yep. can be dangerous. Not because you go in and eat and drink all the time, because when somebody needs something, you're too close to yep. say no. They don't no. call him. <laughs> they don't call him. <laughs> I troubleshoot the draft yeah. system. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so is that the Rosedale location? That is, yep. Yeah, so yep. Rosedale. That fr- I'm a Denver native. Rosedale, I'm like, what? Where is Rosedale? I have, have no idea. It's, it's, it's just like a little proper inside of Denver, just like Cherry Creek would be or Park Hill or... But Rosedale is kind of Broadway and and Evans. I, I yep, guess it exactly. Yeah, it's uh, Broadway just south of Evans. Uh huh. Yep. And and you see uh, the Post all the time on Broadway. You know, I, I mean, it's basically a staple there right now. Building on this brand, that's an interesting endeavor. And I'm thinking to myself, the Stanley Hotel. Jay, have you ever been to the Stanley Hotel? I've stayed at the Stanley. You have? Uh huh. Yeah. I've stayed at the Stanley too. The Carriage House. You familiar with that? Uh, I don't know the carriage house. You know what a carriage house is? I, I mean, other than the words, <laughs> you know, where I think I know what a carriage house is, maybe not. The way you said it, I don't know. I don't know if I know what it yeah, is what now. What a carriage house is. Guys, talk about that property. It's going to be sick. It's uh, so the carriage house. If you're facing the Stanley, it's just to the right of it. Yeah. It's a uh, right now. It just kind of looks like a old barn. Uh, they're going to do a full renovation for us. We're going to have a huge patio over and look at the mountains. Just a ridiculous view of the mountains. Uh, they're actually also working on an event space that's going to be behind our location, where they're going to have events up to 1,500 people, comedy shows, uh, concerts, things like that. So uh, it's going to be awesome. It's going to have a little Stanley twist to it, but still be very much the post and focused on our craft beer and fried chicken. Wow. So, so not just weddings and haunted tours? No. Well, they do a lot. They do a ton of that. Yeah. God bless them. It's bringing a ton of people up there. But, uh, yeah, we're going to be doing our thing, and we're just kind of doing our independent uh, restaurant on their property. But uh, why, why there? I Like, I'm still trying to fit. Somebody must have really loved the Stanley property. Yeah. Uh, well, my business partner and our founder of our company, Dave Query, has uh, been in contact with the owner of the Stanley for the past several years and talked about a bunch of different projects. Uh, and they decided they wanted to rent, wanted to renovate that carriage house, and they thought we'd be a good fit for it. So, will you brew there? 
Uh, we're not going to brew there, but we'll get plenty of our beer up there. That's for yep, sure. Yep. Yeah, we're working on the plan for that right now. Yeah, I wanted to ask you guys. Yeah. So four posts now, and then another one coming up in Estes Park with red rum and all that. Will you find the same beers at each post, or do you kind of switch it up depending on the demographic that wants beer there? Uh, each location gets. To, it depends on the size of their draft system. We'll always have enough to fill the draft lines. Some have more lines than others, so they'll pick and choose which ones, but they'll all be post beers, and all our beers are designed to go well with food, primarily chicken. Man, all of your beers, first of all, just it seems very refined as I look at the top rope and the Howdy beer, which you can see right here, the Howdy beer, just delicious. This is an everyday, daily drinking beer. I mean, Beer-flavored beer. Beer-flavored <laughs> beer. Um, you're, you're brewing with all kinds of different ingredients, but uh, corn's on the list, too, huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's a very traditional uh, American uh, ingredient to put in beer. Our main two beers that use that, one is the uh, Top Rope Mexican-style lager. Mm-hmm. The other one's called El Corn, uh, as, you know, the corn. Yeah. Uh, that one's a dark lager. Uh, we actually have a sample of that here. We brought a... Did you bring that? We brought a couple of those oh, here fantastic. with us today. Love so, yeah, we'll have that to out. try that. That one got a uh, silver medal this year at the Great American Beer Fest, so we're pretty stoked about that. Congratulations. Thank you. You're always out there mixing it up. Uh, doing my best. And you're mm-hmm. never drunk. I try not to. You know. I <laughs> it's almost that's like because I drink howdy. <laughs> and then I talked to Schmitty tonight, and I said, "Chef, well, you know," he says, uh, "I'm not. I'm not. It's dry January, right?" I know, man. Which is fun. I'm getting old. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah, you got to push the reset button. I guess so. How long have Myself you been doing of, that for? Uh, uh, it's been three years. Myself of ten years ago would want to, you know, would think I'm pretty lame now for doing that. But yeah. it's it's a good fresh start to the year sure. and i enjoy the beer that much more once it uh, hits february so you can't really promote that in a brewery though no no as, as far <laughs> as the brewery goes i drink every single day but yeah. a little just, secret you just, is, gotta, you just have to up the chicken sandwich sales it, yeah know, exactly that's exactly chicken sandwiches are right here in front of us i mean oh. it's got everything on it that i would want um what's the secret sauce yeah, so I think the secret sauce is the whole kind of the whole combination. We got a uh, little Dijonese on there, which is pretty simple, just uh, mayo with a little Dijon mustard in it, and then our uh, house made pepper relish. We do these uh, this pickled cauliflower, so we chop up some of that, chop a bunch of uh, pickled peppers, got some lemon zest in there, lemon juice, and then our house made pickles on there. So basically, what I made today is just kind of a smaller version of the chicken sandwich we ordinarily oh, you got do. Got gum? Not, not anymore. Hold on. Yeah. Come on, baby. Give it. Give it to me. Huh? Oh, see that when you got more chicken than anything, that's why. That's I, the that's the key. You got to have the chicken to bun ratio has to heavily favor the chicken. Let me tell you something about you. <laughs> what I remember, both, both the hosts. No. <laughs> wow, that's what you want, right? Man, now I keep want. in mind, they, they, you know, this isn't their kitchen. He, they, you came in, <laughs> Schmitty, with this is our kit, and just put it together for what you could. Did yeah. you do a good job representing uh, what you do? Well, I mean, you tell me. I did my I did my best. I think we did okay. Well, listen, as somebody that grew up on 7-Eleven's cooking, <laughs> that's on a different level. I mean, it's delicious. It's, if it's better than that at the, at the post, you know, and obviously there's bells and whistles that, you know, uh, I, could eat, I could eat all four of those, no problem. Really? Oh, yeah. I'd like to see that. All four? I, I, I mean, you want to Well, he'd have to be, Netflix would have to be on, oh, and okay. he'd have to have candles and his date night with himself. You know, that's when he could put four. You weren't supposed down. to tell anybody about date night. <laughs> no. okay. uh, until I get a date. Date night with myself is a secret. I know. Now that's delicious, Chef. It really is delicious. I, I wonder, because economically, it's like, what would I sell that for? I would sell that for seven bucks. What does that go for? Seven bucks. So our, our full size sandwich goes for like $11.75, I think, and you get choice of fries or slaw. Um, that's kind of like a happy hour version. So you we'd probably do that back. for. Huh? Full value, themoderneater.com. Watch the live stream. Jay, he had to go back for seconds. If we weren't going to sell that for seven, I'd bump it up to seven now since you said so. But Really, what does that go for? No, we Are actually you? don't do one that oh, size. You don't do one yeah. that size. We, do, we basically do uh, the, the portion of the chicken is twice that much. This kind of looked like a half, half version of the, of the chicken breast. What Two of those. Man, I'm telling you what. Gosh almighty. Is sourcing important to you where you get your... Yeah, you know, we go through a t- like a lot of chicken. We go through over 5,000 pounds of chicken a week. Yeah. Um, so we have to use kind of our larger uh, broadliners. But uh, we use a company called George's and a uh, great company. Works uh, out for you? Yeah, it works out great. Um, you know, really high standards and, uh, and, you know, they're able to handle our volume that we go through. 
our biggest sellers are bone-in fried chicken, actually. We go through, you know, 4,500 pounds of just that between the four locations a week, plus all the breasts and all the different cuts we use. So a lot of chicken. We'll talk about the menu. You multiple. ever get people to send back the chicken because it's not crispy enough? They order it crispy, and then that you make it crispy, and then they send it back, and you want to just freak out and choke somebody because you put out the most perfect <laughs> crispy chicken in the world, and they didn't want it, and it still wasn't crispy enough? <laughs> Our motto is make people happy. So if they want it crispier, so, I'll throw that back yeah, in there. Uh, we, <laughs> Smitty, we have to apologize. Just for, so Jay is one of those, uh, you know, 40-year veteran uh, kitchen, front of the house, back of the house, just all-around restaurant guys. He no longer likes the customer. The, the customer has <laughs> well, worn I, Jay I, down. This is the end result of many, many years piling on somebody in the business. So what he likes to try and do is catch somebody off guard and get them on his side real quick. That <laughs> you don't like him. your customer. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 get you to do. That's not what I'm trying to <laughs> and do. And each and every time somebody of their right mind who enjoys business and but, commerce says. But you think I'm trying to trap him into saying, yeah. I hate everybody too. I'm that, Honestly, I'm not trying to do I just want to hear a story it. where it's like, you know, yeah, one time the guy did it and, and somebody tackled right, him sure, and, so. and the whole thing. And truth be told, I don't know if I ever liked the customers. So I, I, don't, know, I don't know if now I don't like them. I think it started out with I don't like them. What would go great with that chicken sandwich? What you can't have or you right now, Schmitty, is a beer. I it's can have a beer. beer. I now, just don't. Guys, here's what I want to do. I want to take a break, come back, 6.30 on 6.30 KHOW, iHeart Radio Hi. Station. We can go to Little Rich in the Little Rich Corner. Um, post The post here with us. I want to come back and talk about how hand-in-hand hand a brew pub has to work so well with their culinary program with the beer, right? So you went from post to post. Yep. Jump <laughs> ship. We've got so much stuff to talk about. This is great to have both these guys in Studio Kitchen with us right now. It's Chef Brett Smith, and then we've got Brad. Brad, it, I think we ran into Brad at the Great American Beer Festival this last year. He was running around. Do you remember? Uh, got a no. couple of pictures. He's on our Instagram like multiple times. I know we've had him on the show before, and we've had the post on, and, and, and Brad and I love each other immensely, but I don't remember running into him at the uh, Great American. I want to get their beers out, the, the beers they Yeah, brought. we're going to get the beers out. We've got so much more to cover, and then we have a new brew pub on the scene. New who, kids on the block. Yeah, and I won't tell There's Kevin McCross and across from me. I'm just going to whisper this to you guys. The post is what they want to be when they grow up. <laughs> that's not a bad. That's not a bad brewery to be when you grow up. <laughs> you probably heard that right underneath the speaker. Did you hear that, McCrossin? No, no, he, he didn't. Know. Okay, <laughs> just, <You're laughs> just playing. Just um, playing. Next hour coming on Counterculture Brewery. It's a new place, Brewery and Grill. Have you been in that area, Jay? Do you even know what area we're talking about? No, it, let's not get into geography because I got a headache listening to the Rosedale thing, and you said something really? about Alameda, and I'm like, oh, no, never mind. It. I get it. All right, we'll break off. Come right back. The Post Brewing Company here with us right here at Studio Kitchen Colorado on the Modern Eater Show on iHeartRadio. Greg, I saw you covering your mouth over there, and I'm like, oh, he's saying something about me. He's saying something. <laughs> hey, I'm here with my new friend, Kevin McCrossin. He's the big cheese at Counterculture Brewery and Grill. That's right. Man, I, and I was talking about this earlier. I drove by last night. The place was packed. What in the blazes are you doing right over there? Well, we're trying awfully hard to kind of take that taproom environment and add food in. Uh, we're a brewery forward uh, with a kitchen, and we're trying to absolutely knock the food out of the park. Well, and you know, it's amazing how well you're doing there, and that, that's a very competitive battleground there. We've got a lot of restaurants right around us, and we're all super friendly, and we're all doing real well. I, I, I should have I should have stopped in last night. I drove Next by, time. I thought it was packed, I was tired, but i got to come back and check this out. So you're going to be showing and telling a little bit of your secret sauce coming up here in the next hour, correct? Absolutely. Awesome. What, no, so what beers did you bring with you? Uh, we've got our Pilsner, we've got a Stout, a Doppelbach, and a Saison. Oh, man, these guys are going to have some fun up here on the table in a little while. Well, hey, we're going to take a, a off-ramp here for some important words from our sponsor. we got the Goods Ardent Mills 4th. And Aspen Baking will be back. 
not only want to eat delicious food and drinks, but I also want to eat where I know my money is going to a local restaurant that I believe in. I believe in The Goods Restaurant on Colfax and Mark Whistler. The Goods is a community restaurant and bar with a menu focusing on vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, and keto options. Comfort food lovers, try the best burger on planet Earth. I love it. Eight ounces of grass-fed beef and never ever... So, yeah, I can hear you. ...biotics or steroids. Yeah, we have a... A cultural melting pot, a family restaurant open to all. Their bar pro... Yes, everything much better. And we have a we have a live read here in about a minute and a half. Their Facebook page... Is it, I don't know what happened, but when when we disconnected and reconnected, it, it fixed it. Located on... E- oh, okay. Oh, sorry, man. All right, I, I don't want to get in trouble. I'm not trying to get anybody in trouble. Well, with free parking and a garage in back. Look them up on... You know, all right. Rest- all right, good. So we got... A uh, minute, minute and 15 seconds to the library. Bake with the best. Little Rich here from Rockalitas Tortillas and the Modern Eater. Our wraps fold cold and don't break open, yet they're soft and delicious. What's my secret? Ardent Mills. Organic, ancient, and heirloom grains like quinoa, spelt, and more. Locally headquartered in Denver, Colorado, Ardent Mills provides the industry's broadest range of traditional and organic flours, whole grains, customized blends, and specialty products dedicated to providing the culinary industry with the next grains and unique plant-based ingredients. I love Ardent Mills. And I know you will, too. To bake the best, you must use the best. Learn more at ardentmills.com. Taxes, payroll, and workman's comp? Ugh. If you're a business owner, I bet hearing me say those dirty words made you cringe. Hi, I'm Rebecca Berry with Forth, and I know growing and managing a business can seem overwhelming and just daunting at times. But at Forth, we've got you covered. Forth knows you want to take your business to the next level. Forth was designed... 30 seconds till I read. ...and will allow you to free up your time and resources to do what you do best, grow and manage your business. Call me. Let's talk about how I can help. 720-436-8047. That's 720 720- 436-8047, Rebecca with Forth. Hey, brewery and restaurant owners, listen up. Do you want to save 10 to 20% on your natural gas bill? Of course you do. Saving money is making... 10 seconds. Just a phone call away. Call Brian Rizzuto now, 720-245... 5. Back to the We're back. In just a minute. And you're going to hear from Brian Rizzuto and Encore Energy at the top of the hour, but before we get there, I want to talk bread, and I want to talk about Aspen Baking Company. AspenBaking.com is where you go to find all the delicious bread you love. Hoagies, focaccias, ciabattas, baguettes, croissants, the list goes on and on, but what doesn't go on and on are preservatives or artificial coloring or chemicals. Greg, you don't want that in your bread. What you do want is uh, some sugar, some butter, and, Gotta eat it quick. and some gluten. Gotta and, eat it. And it's delicious. Don't let it sit around. No, no, no. No, no, Eat don't. your bread. Eat your aspen. <laughs> yeah. hashtag, and use the hashtag because they do. They do. Yeah. Hashtag, how's your aspen? It's Aspen Baking Company. They're local. They're beautiful. They're awesome. I'll say the website one more time, and it's back to the show. It's aspenbaking.com. Hi, Michael Myers from Distillery 291. I'll say whatever you want me to say. <laughs> That'll get me in trouble. Ride it like you stole it, drink it like you own it. You're listening to The Modern Eater on iHeartRadio. I don't know, Jay, how's your ass been? <laughs> Non-existent, <laughs> from what I'm told. Man, that full moon drained me. I don't know if it did anybody else. And I know you're not an energy guy or anything else like that. Ooh, look at this. We've got a little, a little, a little side project ooh, a little powwow. Yeah. Well, she wants a beer. She wants she a beer. Yeah, she's, you, oh, not yeah. out of the can. you got to have a glass. Can. We've got yeah. glass around we the corner. Glass. Can you, that's right. all yeah. we have glass-wise? Can you grab a couple more glasses there, Georgia boy? We've got a demand for glasses, and we have a yeah. demand for beer, and we've got to fulfill that. I got demand. it. <laughs> that I got it. Yeah, no, we, yeah, we got gotcha. you. Yeah, yeah, that was so cute. Thomas. Hey, my first time. Thomas from the Post Brewing. How are you? I'm well. How are you, fellas? Well, we're good, too. Yeah? Now that we have some beer, Brad back with us. Uh, gentlemen, brewing, it's such a serious business, isn't it? it it's a lot of fun. I mean, it's a lot of work. Too. Yeah, it's a lot of work and a lot of fun. <laughs> where, where, where'd you get your inspiration? Uh, I just love beer. I always have. It's got a lot of different flavors, so I'll just uh, figure out, you know, what flavor I want out of my beer next, and we'll. What'd you do in your last life? Were you always brewing beer? I've always, you know, I started brewing beer when I turned 20 and realized I could buy all the stuff to make the beer. Just couldn't buy the beer, so started brewing then. <laughs> That's like Dave Thibodeau, man. Yeah. That's the exact story from Dave from Scott Brewing yeah. Company. He was saying the same. Came across some of his old man's recipes, and they were like, oh, we can just go ahead and brew our own beer since we can't go get it. I shoulder-tapped myself. 
Do you know what shoulder tapping is? No, you just go that? tap on a guy's shoulder and you know, hey, I'll give you twenty bucks. I only want a six pack. Reasonable. Do the rest reasonable. yourself. Reasonable. Yeah, it turned out good about eighty percent of the time. <laughs> the other twenty was someone just taking your twenty and going, "You punk kid, get out of my face." You get a lot of forties of Mickey's that way. Yeah, very real. Cool. <laughs> I digress back to proper business. Yeah, brewing. Uh, delicious beer that people love. So how many of the four locations are actually brewing beer? we got two breweries uh, between the four locations. Lafayette, the original, and then Boulder. Our Boulder location has actually been a brewery longer. That uh, opened up as Redfish in the 90s. I think 96 that one opened up. It's been a brewery. We, uh, we purchased it from Shine, and we're still brewing fantastic beers there as well. How's the equipment? It was made in '96, so you know it's it it's it tells a good it's story. It's trusty. <laughs> it's trusty. You know, Peter Bukar's brewed on it. We've had a lot of. It works. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Dale's <laughs> like Pale's season. been brewed on it. It's uh, it's fantastic equipment. So what's the what's the model here? Because you've got a lot of other places you have to supply beer to. Talk about that, you guys. I mean, there's other restaurants that are involved in this. Uh, yeah. So we do uh, out of Lafayette. We make. Uh, Kind of the main beers you'll see here are, you know, our main four or five, six beers, depending on what season we're in. Uh, then Boulder gets a little bit more experimental with our one-off beers that maybe we'll make it again, maybe we won't. You know, everybody likes beers to rotate. Uh, when you're working with a restaurant, people do like consistency in the beer, so we're able, with the two breweries, able to kind of keep everybody happy that way. What's up with distribution? Uh, we're with Breakthrough, so anybody out there that wants to buy beer for their uh, their on-premise or off-premise, uh, look us up. We're on Breakthrough. Uh, the only beer that we're able to put in cans right now is our Howdy beer. It's a Western Pilsner. It's won two uh, medals at Great American Beer Fest. It's, it's good. Beer-flavored beer. Uh, it's fantastic. It's 4.5%. Easy drinking. Yeah, you can have a thousand of them. Yeah, except please do, please do. <laughs> <laughs> Thomas is looking at me like, well, thousand, maybe a you know, hundred, but yeah, not, yeah. Not we all have that. our own high score. Right? Yeah. That's right. And what a be? I mean, that's the one you want in a can, yeah. right there. Yeah. Uh, but you, look at the the crawlers. Yeah. Out of Lafayette, uh, we're able to uh, if the beer is produced on site, we're able to sell it in the crawlers to go. So you'll. Notice between Boulder and Lafayette, we have different beers that we're able to sell. Uh, that's just, you know, our state has laws, so we follow them. Uh, so here we uh, today I brought the Elkhorn and the Townie. The uh, Elkhorn I mentioned earlier is the dark Mexican lager. And then the Townie. Can I get down on some of that? Absolutely. I want to try that. that that's the one that won at Great American Beer Fest this yeah, year. Yeah, you can only smell it. I, I smelled the Pilsner, and it's delicious. And I just always feel like pointing out that my sobriety is not court-ordered. You know, I, I just feel compelled to tell people that, you know, because they look at me and think, there's got to be something going on if this guy's not loaded half shame. of his life, you know. We're all friends here. <laughs> Talk about the Judgment-free zone. Uh, yeah, this beer, uh, you know, it's got a little bit darker malt in it, oh, but it's not... Man. It's not like a stout where you're going to get those coffee roasty flavors. It's just a nice, easy drinking, you know, five and a half percent, a little bit bigger than the Howdy. Yeah. Definitely darker than the Howdy. That one does have corn in it, as its uh, namesake would have you believe. And to, just to clarify, it's not elk horn, it's elk corn. Uh, it used to be elk corn, and then we changed the name to elk corn. It used to be elk horn, like an elk like an, horn. Like an animal with antlers. Yeah, and yeah. we changed it to elk, elk horn. horn. Well, that's not confusing. Yeah. Well, we, uh, we, we've we talked about packaging it, and we can't put it in a can with elk horn, the animal. Uh, there's just uh, there's some other legality issues. No kidding. Yeah, there's a whiskey out there. So. Ah. Hey, side note, Chef Smitty is just killing it in the yeah. kitchen right now. we got a bunch of happy people <laughs> eating chicken sandwiches out there. And uh, next up, I'm going to guess and say those are the chicken the pot pies, pies. Yeah. which yeah. is a once a week thing. And we're going to talk to Chef Schmitty in the kitchen in our segment in the next segment. Right now, talking beer and uh, catching up with Thomas and Brad. Thomas, where are you located at? Or are you just. So I work with uh, Brad over in uh, the Lafayette location. Yeah. Oh, you do? Yeah, yeah. How about making up tons of beer for us? Where do you come from? I used to work at a company called Mountain Sun. Uh, Mountain Sun Pub and Breweries out here inside Denver and Boulder and like that. Uh, that's where I learned to brew, and so um, just started working with Brad. It's been pretty amazing um, in every way, shape, and form. What's your favorite style of beer? 
German beers. Really? Pilsners. Pilsners, um, I could do a Dunkel any day of the week. Gotcha. I mean, I certainly love all styles of beer, um, up to and including even the new stuff. You know, a lot of people uh, don't love all the hazy IPAs. A lot of people don't like the seltzers and stuff like that, but I do. I think they're cool. Um, I think it's a, a big movement that's going to happen, and I think that we got some cool stuff. Um, across the board or in the, you know, in the brewing industry that's uh, I'm really excited about. I'm glad you cracked that open because seltzer is something I like to talk about. Yeah? Um, for the obvious reasons because uh, you'll talk to some brewers in general and go, oh, man, I, I have to brew it. <laughs> I, I have to make it. Yeah, uh, I don't necessarily, but it's a, it's like the Wild West right now. It's oh, yeah. Money grab. Yeah, right? yeah, absolutely. Okay, so first of all, so why, why is it the tech? No, why wasn't this? Ten years ago, you know, I, I have a lot of theories about it. Can you? Uh, um, I think I think one of the biggest things is that it's certainly popular with a female population, and girls want to drink just as much as dudes do. Um, and so I think it's a a big, really awesome thing that's going on with a more of an inclusive crowd coming in, you know, um, which is why I think a lot of people are returning to some really awesome, you know, more drinkable. Easier to now go you through put beers. Females into that. Is it the guys don't care about their weight or mm, calorie intake? Uh, I, I wouldn't say it like that. I would certainly say it just opens to a bigger crowd. So you, know? you would surmise that yeah. that seltzer is better for you in a caloric way. Uh, I don't know about that. Well, I'm trying to figure out what's the benefit. Why is seltzer such a mad rush right now? I think it's, it's different. It's not the taste. It's. I think it's different. I think it's just cool and different. You know, cool people different. are people are into things that are different. I think we've seen that a lot. In I the say, last I'll years. say this in my experience, and I was bartending last night, you know, and we sell the, the, the white claws, yeah. you know, and then the other one is at least the perception yeah, is of it better is, is that it's better for. I mean, those are the majority of our drinkers. Yeah. Now, I'm not a, we're not a brewery, you know, yeah. it's kind of a sports bar thing, so it's a little bit different. But I see a lot of people, and, and they don't, and a lot of people drink them, Greg, and they don't want them. Even, right, even right, guys. Right, right, like, right. he doesn't really want it, or yeah. she doesn't really She's want like, it. Who wants a they, vodka soda? Does anybody want that? <laughs> ah, well, it's a means to an end. <laughs> but a lot of but that means to an end. That is anything? that is a perception is, of a lot of people. Because you're not going to get this one-off adjunct seltzer that has a, a little tinge of basil and a little vinegar. I mean, yeah. you're not getting any of that with yeah. with the seltzer. So I'm wondering about: is this something that's going to hang on? Is it going to catch steam? Or are all these breweries going to jump on board to do this thing? Cut back their production on beer yeah. for seltzer using their space for that and then all of a sudden it falls flat. I, I certainly hope that it doesn't, it, that it's nothing like that and that people who are drinking beer continue to drink beer in the same way that they're doing so. I just like that there is a new group of people that are but getting into not. something that's pretty cool, which is a craft movement. I know? was talking to a liquor store <laughs> owner last night and yeah. it was really interesting. He says, I'm real bored with uh, spirits and beer in general. I'm just bored. I'm like, okay, well, tell me why. He said, he said, well, let's just take the beer thing. First of all, um, Colorado kind of had this mad rush on the, the adjuncts, the different tastes, the flavor infusions, putting things together. Not so much anymore. Everybody, and that's why I was going back to your beer menu. People are going back to the lighter. Exactly. Li- Drinkable a- stuff. Yeah. Right there. So is it just a shift of what we're seeing, or is it was it played out? What, what are we seeing right now with this shift in, in craft beer? Yeah. As someone who's in it day in, day out, and has been that way for a little bit, I would say that it really, truly is a movement where more people are experiencing something that is a general craft alcohol, for lack of a better term, movement. Um, and so, you know, I certainly have seen a lot of places that are making more of one type or less of one type, but at the same time, it seems it's just being made in greater numbers, which I think is an overall positive thing. So for me, it's not either or. Um, it's just about a general excitement of all of it. As as brewers, can can you add some bells and whistles to a, a hard cider if you wanted to, to kind of add a, a a little bit more of a craft conversation? Like if you get some something leaves they, from somewhere, and you're like, I'm soaking it in the tea leaves, so it comes, it takes a flavor. I, don't, I mean, I don't make them. You know, I don't, I don't make the. So I, I, I think junk. I think they're fun, but I, you know, I don't I don't personally make them. Isn't it junk flavoring too? Just artificial flavors that you for the most in. part. There's a yeah. handful that are doing some natural stuff. Yeah. I can't think of offhand, right. but uh, I'd be more into it if it was more natural. Because yeah, I do like yeah. the kombucha a lot. 
I like know? kombucha a lot, and I would love it if it was kind of my means for a delicious mm-hmm. alcohol. I mean, obviously, I could put a little vodka in some yeah. kombucha. Or a lot. Or, yeah. or a lot. Yeah. But in, in the same sense, it'd be, it, yeah, it'd be if it was brewed for, the specialty brewed for an alcoholic mm-hmm. beverage, I would enjoy that. You guys getting down on some of these chicken sandwiches? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We can tear away from you. Chef's coming back with the pot pie now. What do you guys think of the pot pie that you guys are rolling? Oh, out? it's fantastic. No words. It's so yeah. great. It's so great. It's so great. <laughs> pot pie just brings me back to that uh, middle of the winter kind of real uh, hearty meal that comes right at you. You know, throw a piece of bread in there, and then uh, that's it. Take it out. Mm-hmm. This, this one's substantial. Uh, you know, you're not going to lose weight eating it. It's it's pretty <laughs> fantastic. Uh, it's got a night. The crust is what gets me. I've I never, can't wait to see him. Never had a pot pie with this kind of crust. It's fantastic. Little Rich is in the Little Rich Corner with Brian Rizzuto from Encore Energy. I can't wait to hear what they're going to talk about there. Okay, we'll break off. We'll come back. We'll do the In the Kitchen segment, and that's where Chef Brent Smith, Brett Smith, will come back with us. I just call him Schmitty. It's easier uh, for him. I mean, it's no, there's no BS here, all right? There's just real, real chef talk. Kitchen name. Yep. Next hour, Kevin McCrossin and Chef James Bland, Counter Culture Brewery. i got to ask Chef Bland. What's it like to be a chef with the last name Bland? Let me, let me, just, can, let me just tease something, and we do have to take a break because Dave's going to freak out. They have a sauce that's called the Bland sauce. No, they don't. Yeah, they okay, do. we'll yeah. figure that out, too. Yeah. All right, Studio Kitchen, Colorado. This is a cool night for me. Um, a lot of uh, my colleagues from iHeartRadio are here with us, and uh, that just makes me smile seeing those guys here. And uh, we'll take a break. We'll come back. Little Rich, Little Rich Corner, right here, Studio Kitchen, Colorado. Thanks, Greg. Man, it is Ryan in here. There's a lot of stuff going on. Hey, you know what? It's the new year, and everyone's always looking for new ways to be more profitable. And so they always attack the different line items. But one almost everybody never looks at is their utilities, what they're spending on natural gas. That's why I got brought my friend here, Brian. Brian, do you have any tips for us on how to save money on natural gas? Absolutely. Just call me. Call me. That's all you got to do. What's that number, Brian? That number is 720-245-5771. Say it one more time. 720-245-5771. I do all the work, and you save the money. He saves the money. You know, Greg, I think we got to have Brian do his own spot next time. He's, he's really, really good at this. I Listen, got it. Save yourself some money. You can reallocate that money on marketing, on on just being more profitable. I've done it. I've saved a ton. That's why he's here. I'm trying to help you guys be more profitable. This is one easy way to do it. Be sure and give Brian a call at Encore Energy. We'll be right back. we got our sponsors coming up. Gluten-free things. we got John Irvin in the house. Colorado Mills, Element Knife, and Proud Souls. Lifestyler, is your menu limited because you've eliminated gluten from your diet? Are you missing the taste of foods that traditionally contain gluten? What if I told you that you can add pizzas, muffins, cakes, cookies, waffles, croissants, English muffins, the list goes on right back to your menu. Gluten-Free Things is a local gluten-free and vegan bakery that reintroduces you to the foods you love. Owner John Irvin believes gluten-free shouldn't taste like the box that it's packaged in. Trust me when I tell you the products from his bakery in Arvada are fresh, flavorful, and masterly crafted, leaving you with a product that tastes like the real thing. Simply delicious. The bakery is located in Arvada on 64th and Sims across the street from Arvada West High School. Check out their website at glutenfreethings.com. You'll be amazed with the variety of gluten-free products they make. And chefs, don't leave your gluten-free restaurant guests without options. Contact John at info at glutenfreethings.com. That's info at glutenfreethings.com to see what he can do for you. Give him a shot. 11651 West 64th Avenue in Arvada. It's gluten-free things. Hey, chef friends, it's Little Rich here from Rockalitas Tortillas. Rockalitas, known for hyper-local, innovative, and healthy tortillas and chips, served by Colorado's top chefs, and that's why we only use Colorado Mills sunflower oil. If you, too, want to serve the healthiest, most vibrant-tasting foods, you must use Colorado Mills. Colorado Mills is hyper-local, Colorado-grown, Cold pressed in Lamar, Colorado. Whether you bake, fry, or saute, get your Colorado Mills today. Available through Shamrock, Growers Organic, and Don Foods. For the best oil in the business, use Colorado Mills. Hey, it's Chef Elon Wenzel, owner of Element Knife Company. If you cook, 
then you'll know the importance of a quality knife and proper care. My training in Japan exposed me to exceptional cutlery. That's why I am so excited to offer you the knives I fell in love with. Element Knife Company is chef-driven, and my goal is to support and educate. Get at me for a knife clinic or conversation. Find me at elementknife.com or by simply calling 303-460-460. 4628. For the best knives in your kitchen, think Element Knife Company. Listen up, barbecue lovers. Greg Holland back here for Proud Souls Barbecue and Provisions. Proud Souls is Denver's authority of all things barbecue. Do you rule your neighborhood with the best backyard barbecue? From beginners to pit masters, Proud Souls has all the equipment you could possibly want. A variety of wood, pellet, and charcoal grills and smokers. Award-winning pit masters and owners of Proud Souls, Dan and Tony, have a passion for barbecue, and it shows. Located on 25th and Federal, Proud Souls Retail Store is bursting at the seams with your barbecuing essentials, the Spice Guy spices, and superior flavored fuels for your pit like hickory, mesquite, oak, pecan, cherry, apple, peach, maple, grape, and a variety of blends. Hit their website, ProudSoulsBBQ.com, for delicious hands-on barbecue classes and get information on current promotions and deals. For the best in barbecue, locally owned and operated on 25th and Federal, there are guys, Proud Souls Barbecue and Provisions. That's ProudSoulsBBQ.com. Feed me now! This is the Modern Eater Show. That's right, boy! I'm, at- I'm starving! And now it's time for In the Kitchen. How am I supposed to keep on feeding you? Kill people? Brought to you by... Proud Souls Barbecue and Provisions, award-winning competition cooks and purveyors of specialty barbecue supplies right here in Denver, Colorado. ProudSoulsBBQ.com. Feed me all night long. Okay, back at it. Uh, show live from Studio Kitchen, Colorado. Lots of friends and family here. Second show of the year. And uh, I'm talking to The Post Brewing Company. And The Post, it, you know what, Jay... Here's what fascinates me. I know exactly what Rich did. I saw little Rich across the room. He just said, OMG. Oh, my God. Look at this food. Yeah. The so, food is. Thanks, yeah, put that microphone right down to you, Schmitty. <laughs> Chef Schmitty. Here. Over here. Yeah, no, no, no. You're fine, man. <laughs> you're killing it in the kitchen. Wow, wow, and wow. It smells delicious in the kitchen. You're oh. really killing it. You set the, you know, next hour. Here comes um, counterculture. They're going to get after it, man. They're going to crush it, too. <laughs> wow, you did a great job. What are we looking at here? Uh, so this is, a, we've done pot pie, and our menu is kind of like a blue plate specialty showcase every Wednesday uh-huh. night. And I'm looking to do something different. So you guys are going to be the first ones to try this out. We're looking to do these little mini pot pies for a happy hour. Um, so just kind of switching up our mix a little bit. And I wanted to make it a fried chicken pot pie. So it's kind of like your basic pot pie starter. And then on top, it's uh, breaded, uh, boneless, skinless chicken thighs. Uh, so just nice, crispy, delicious. Uh, the filling on the inside is uh, basically based off of our um, country gravy. So use that as a base. And then you got carrots, onion, celery, potato, and some peas in there. A lot of fresh sage. Oh, my God. And then the best part is there's fried chicken on top, so you really can't go wrong. Mouth is just watering, watering. It, full value, themoderneater.com. You can hey, watch the this, live stream. I know. you got to take it on right here. Anybody who loves food porn, we're just definitely... Warmly showing this to be the best of this you guys so we always open it up to people we're enjoying the beer we're enjoying the food we enjoy you guys um you can't think of a more that you could possibly say to say okay how are you going to go to the post i think we've done (laughs) it but what would you do in a 30 second to one minute elevator speech if come join us at the post and the post we're all about uh we're all about our fried chicken uh and and elevated basically we like to take simple things and make them as good as they can possibly be so we're just trying to make our fried chicken as delicious as possible uh lots of comfort food sides uh everything's kind of elevated coming from a uh you know coming from a chef's perspective um seasonal sides uh, of course our fantastic uh you know award winning craft beer that Brad and our other brewers uh brew up and then I think our biggest thing is our hospitality. You know, we want people to come in and just feel feel welcome and feel like they're going to have a great time and hang out with us and get get after some chicken and beer. I mean, that's what it's all about. Uh, this is you haven't put this isn't on the menu yet. This is just something. Not you're this playing exact around? version. This is the new version. They do it. I'll it's tell like you what. Yesterday, okay. that's on yesterday. That's unreal. So I'm looking really at that is. that size is like a happy hour portion for like three or four bucks. Just get people coming in and oh get after God. that. Have some howdy and. Have a good time in the afternoon. All day with this. Are yeah, and kidding? it's not your traditional pot pie where you're you know, maneuvering around the crust and you got the top. You're, you threw a delicious buttery biscuit. In yeah. 
with it. Oh, man, we got to get those into people's hands right there. Oh, I know. That's what that's, we have yeah, to do. I'll get those out there. We're going to break here at the top of the hour right now. We're just going to continue to direct the attention. The culinary is fantastic. I mean, it really is. Uh, well done. Uh, they got a keeper with you. Thank you, man. Fantastic. It. DIA is a possibility? Uh, we're in DIA. It's kind of a mess out there, as any uh, Denver travelers know now. But uh, we're, we have a contract signed. We'll be in there eventually whenever they get all that stuff figured out, but uh, we'll definitely be in there. Our sister restaurant, Jack's Fish House, is going to be in there as well, so it's going to be it's gonna be awesome. I don't know when. I have no clue, Two but minutes. at some point we'll be in there, and that'll be killer. Wow. Don't stop, can't stop. That's it, man. Got to keep it going. Got to get this chicken and beer out there. Got mouths to feed at home, so got to keep doing it. <laughs> you really did command this kitchen. I mean, well done. You came in oh. here, a consummate professional. You can just tell you're really on your game. The guys here with the beer, perfect. Uh, I don't know what more to say other than get yourself to one of the posts. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you having us on here. It's been fun. That's good stuff. Don't know what more to say for these guys. We're going to take a break. We'll come back. We do the top of the hour. Little Rich Corner for six minutes. You just go over to the Facebook. It'll entertain you. It's better than any of the world news that's going on right now. I can tell you that. And then Counter Culture, it's a new brewery grill. It's kind of in that Bonanno area is what I call it, the Governor's Park area. We'll talk to them. It's fairly new. So I think it's about a month old. Have you been there? Mm-hmm. I have not been. You haven't been there. Maybe no, we'll take, forward to it. take a field trip. Kevin McCrossin and Chef James Bland, they'll be up next. How much time do we have left there, Don, at the studio? One minute. One minute to go. One minute. Uh, Jay, Brian's off tonight. You're sitting in. Great job in the Brian seat tonight. Well, uh, uh, oh, thank you. All the uh, way down the line. Yeah, yeah. Well, so far, so good. Elon's knives are lined up. Yeah, yeah, Chef Elin's here. Jason Wange is going to come up in uh, in Little Rich's corner for the six minutes at the top of the break. Oh, he is. And I can't say enough about Jason Wange and Desert Peak, and, and that's the Heston range that uh, that all the chefs use in our kitchen. And uh, haven't had to do one thing since we plugged it in and, and lit the fire, mm-hmm. man. That thing Very runs generous. like a monster. All right, let's take a break. We'll come back to Studio Kitchen Colorado. You are listening to the Modern Eater Show on iHeartRadio.